Hi everyone and welcome to the Hudson River Estuary. My name is Laurel Zima and I'm the Education and Outreach Coordinator at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Today we're going to be focusing on sea level rise and how it's impacting um, our Hudson River. Hi, I'm Margie Turin, Director of Educational Field Programs at Lamont Doherty and today we're going to be looking at the impacts of sea level rise at two different locations in this part of the river. We're going to start with Piermont Pier, which is where our field station is. That's River Mile 25 up from the tip of Manhattan. And then we'll take a look at Alpine Boat Basin, which is at River Mile 19, a little south of us, just to see what the future holds in terms of sea level rise. The Hudson is actually an estuary. It connects to the Atlantic Ocean on its most southern end and stretches 153 miles all the way up to the Troy Dam. As an arm of the sea, the Hudson experiences sea level rise that's driven by global warming. These rising seas due to thermal expansion and the melting of land ice impacts riverfront towns and communities all along the Hudson. Our seas are not only rising, they're accelerating. This graph looks at the relative sea level trend at the Battery in New York City. From 1856 to 2020, you can see that our sea level is rising at an average of 2.88 millimeters per year. According to the 2021 New York State DEC climate change report, sea level along New York's ocean coast and the Hudson has risen more than one foot since 1900. That's about 1.2 inches per decade. This New York State report also has made various different projections based on the different locations in New York State as well as our human activity to mitigate climate change. So this report has created different projections from low to high scenarios for Long Island, New York City to uh, Kingston, which is recognized as the lower Hudson Reach, and then the mid Hudson Reach, which is from Kingston to the Troy Dam. Okay, so this represents changes in sea level rise. We're going to start with worst case scenario. So this is in the year 2050, 30 inches of sea level rise. If we move out to 2080, it's 58 inches of sea level rise. And if we were to actually push out to 2100, it's 75 inches of sea level rise. Sea level rise impacts also depend on the topography of an area. So to visualize these projections made by New York State, we're going to measure out what would be inundated under a high range scenario at Alpine Boat Basin and Piermont Pier. For our demonstration today, we're looking at the high range scenario, which is this red color. And we're extending out from this space until we hit the edge of the landscape using a level so that we can see how far sea level would extend. And again, that's at 2050. Then we adjust for 2080. And of course that's going to take us further inland. And then we adjust finally for 2100. All right, we're gonna start at Alpine Boat Basin, which is River Mile 19. There's a slight uphill gradient from the waterfront until you hit the Palisades sill. We are first going to measure out where the sea level rise projection will be for 2050. You can see we identify this spot at this first marker. Next we measure out where the sea level rise is projected to be at 2080 and it's located farther inland at the second green marker. Finally, we measure the projections for 2100 and you can see it is all the way back until we hit the Palisades sill. Now we're going to measure the distance of inundation from the shoreline during a mid-tide to each of these projections. The 2050 projection indicates that we are going to be 15.7 feet inland from the current sea level. The 2080 projection shows that the sea level rise will bring the water 37.7 feet inland. And finally, the 2100 projection will push sea level 85 feet inland until we hit the Palisades sill, and the water height would actually be one foot above where we're standing now. Under this scenario, this area will be completely inundated with water. Now we're going to look at sea level rise impacts at Piermont Pier, which is River Mile 25. This is a human-made pier that extends about halfway into the middle of the Hudson. There is a slight uphill gradient from the shoreline, but once you reach the asphalt of the pier, the landscape flattens out. 
First, Bargy is going to measure out the sea level rise projection for 2050. You can see it's identified here at the first green marker. Next, we're going to measure out the projection for 2080, and it's identified here at the second green marker. Finally, we're measuring the projection for 2100, and you can see the water will extend all the way back until we hit our Hudson River Field Station. As we did for Alpine Boat Basin, we are now going to measure the distance of inundation from the mid-tide shoreline. The 2050 projection indicates that the shoreline will move 14.3 feet inland from where it is today. The 2080 projection shows that sea level will rise 37.3 feet inland. And finally, the 2100 projection will push the sea level 134.7 feet inland until we hit the Hudson River Field Station. And this water height would be about two feet above where we're standing. As you can see under this scenario, the entire pier will be covered with water. While these projections are alarming, it is important to remember that we're looking at the high range business as usual scenario. If we take aggressive action to mitigate climate change, we could reduce our sea level rise to the mid-range scenario. We also wanted to pay attention to a mid-range sea level rise if we're able to do some corrections in our, our lifestyle. So um, by the year 2050, it would be 16 inches of sea level rise. By the year 2080, it would be 29 inches of sea level rise. And by the year 2100, 36 inches of sea level rise. These mid-range sea level rise projections still have an impact, but they're much less severe. And we're hopeful that we won't be reaching these high range scenarios because there are a lot of recently passed state laws and federal bills in the pipeline that would drastically reduce our emissions in New York State and the United States as a whole. But it takes a personal commitment from each one of us to rewrite our futures. So some things that you can do to help mitigate climate change are to increase your energy efficiency in your home. You can collaborate with your community, whether that be your friends, family, neighborhood, or school, to have a bigger impact outside of yourself. And use social media to share information about climate change or commit to talking more about climate change with your friends and family. And finally, make sure your voices are heard by voting for the public officials that put climate change at the top of the agenda. And feel free to check out our Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory Hudson River Field Station website for more information.